If you've been following along on my antenna energy receiving experiments, you'll recall that I added a small pulse motor, and lately I added a pulse generating circuit. I introduced it in a previous video, I'll give you a glimpse of it. In this video, I'm going to go into a little detail about how it works, the concept behind it, what I had in mind, and what I was trying to accomplish with it. This is the circuit here. This big conglomeration. What it is, it's a complicated arrangement of some capacitors, diodes, and coils. There's no transistors in here or any kind of switching device in here. This is not some kind of elaborate jewel thief. There's no transformers. Each coil here is just a single winding. The only switching device that's controlling anything is in the pulse motor, the reed switch controlling the pulse motor. First I'll do a comparison. Right now the pulse motor is operating directly off the antenna circuit and it's operating at about 4.4 volts a little bit better and that's what's going across the coil too. I had to bypass part of this three-way read switch because I only need operation in one direction. And we're getting some flyback off of two of these LEDs a little bit. I don't know if you can see anything happening there. And now I will switch it over to the pulse generating circuit. I had to label all my wires because I kept getting them confused myself. And the first thing you'll notice is that that flyback, getting quite a bit more flyback through three of the diodes now. And you can see them. This is the mode of operation right now. I think I showed this once before at the pulse generator. Drive coil and three LEDs in the series. And we got that three-way read switch operating. And I'll check the voltage that this is operating at now. The antenna circuit has jumped up to 5.5 .5 volts. And across the coil we're getting over 9 volts when it peaks out going across the coil. So we are realizing more power running through the system now than before. The, the pulse generator circuit is causing less of a voltage drop on the antenna circuit. The voltage is higher and we picked up a few RPMs but I think most of that in extra energy we're getting available is coming through the flyback. I think because of the higher voltage we could probably put a bigger coil on there. I still have not come up with the best configuration for this pulse generating circuit, I tried probably like six different types of variations. And now I'll go into the basic schematics of that so you can see what's been going through my mind and what I've been trying to accomplish. In this area, I have the other pulse motor that I built set up and two other designs of pulse generator circuits. The one it's connected to and running off of now and one that I had built earlier. They're both sort of crudely made with plywood and hot glue to secure things down. I just used what I had and built it in a manner that I could easily take apart. Like the one connected to the antenna power 
These circuits are both complicated connections of capacitors, diodes, and coils. And these get connected the same way the other pulse motor was connected to that pulse generating circuit. And this was that diagram. We've got the pulse generator circuit, negative coming in, and when it's over here it charges up the capacitors, and then when it's switched over here they're discharged through the drive coil. But in this case I only got two LEDs in a series picking up the back spike from those uh, drive coils. I'll do a quick test right now to see what the voltage, operating voltages are. It's connected up to a, a 6 volt battery pack there. Pull this over so you can see what's happening here. The battery voltage to the pulse generator is about 6.21 volts. And the peak voltage to the drive coils is up there around 14 volts at the peak. That's a little over twice the source voltage. This higher voltage charge might seem like it's creating energy, but the way I would describe what's happening is that it's salvaging energy that would have been part of the loss. I'm not done with the design, but this is what I have operating right now. The goal with this pulse generator circuit was to try to reduce voltage drop. When you have a DC voltage source with a tiny amp capacity, like with the antenna power, there's a tremendous voltage drop when much of a load is placed on it. That voltage drop is lost energy if it's not recovered. For example, if you have a 6 volt DC voltage source, but with only a tiny amp capacity, only a tiny number of electrons can flow with a 6 volt potential across the load. If you try to draw more current out for a larger load, the voltage drops because electrons just can't be supplied. If you go to charge a capacitor in its own circuit, when it's first connected, for a moment it's like a dead short because almost no resistance in the circuit. The amps it would be trying to pull is the voltage divided by the resistance. The voltage drops until the charge starts to build and resists the flow. The voltage in the closed circuit will start out as zero, then build up. The time it takes to build up is determined by the size of the capacitor and the amp capacity of the voltage source. With a tiny amp capacity like the antenna power, I wanted to try to find a way to reduce that initial sudden large amp draw when charging a capacitor. Which brings me to this circuit. When you put capacitors in a series, the total capacitance drops. Two capacitors of the same capacitance in a series will now be one half of what their rated values are. More in a series of the same capacitance, you just divide the value of a single capacitor by the number of them. Right here, this is a drawing I have of 10 capacitors in a series, and say if each one is 10 microfarads, you know, from point to point, the total overall capacitance is one microfarad. So when you charge these capacitors in the series from point to point, the load on the voltage source is now 
one tenth of charging, say, just a single capacitor because it takes less time to charge it. There will be a voltage drop, but for much less period of time. When you close the switch, you'll charge these capacitors up real quick. They're in a series. You know, the value will be low, like one microfarad. These will char 10 will charge up real quick. Now the trick here is you want to bypass this first one. So these nine are at a lower voltage than the voltage source. Now you could do this manually by just taking the negative lead and touching it over here. Then these nine will charge up to the voltage source. And you could keep doing this all the way down the line. Just touch the negative to each one of these. And like when you get to here, it will charge up. These capacitors here will be charged up to the voltage source until you get all the way down to the last one. And then that one will be charged up to the voltage source. You could do it you know, manually or you can try to put a delay in between each of these capacitors. And that's what I tried to do with the coils. There's an inductive time constant to each coil, so it'll give it a little delay in between each one. Now, current takes a path of least resistance, so it'll have to overcome this before it can get to the center here. So, it's, of course, it's just going to shoot down there. Then, when it overcomes this inductance, it'll have to overcome this one before it can continue, so there'll be a little delay. And in that time, it will charge up all of these capacitors to the voltage source. Then there will be a time delay, and then you know the current will keep taking the path of least resistance and keep charging all of these up. So now we have a whole line of capacitors charged up to different values, with the last one being charged at the voltage source, and each one will be a little bit less. But they're all in a series. They're all on top of each other. So that's how we realize the higher voltage through the circuit. We just placed a charge on all those capacitors with the same number of electrons that it would have took to charge up that capacitor on the end, the far left end. For each electron that flows out of the negative of the voltage source through the circuit, one electron will flow out from the positive plate of that capacitor on the far left end. And instead of just having that one capacitor charged, we now have a whole string of capacitors with various charges on them. The diodes direct and hold the charges until the circuit is switched to discharge. I just didn't draw them all in, but they're all, all the current will be flowing in this direction, and you could take it off of here. This is the basic concept. There are some problems with it, and I keep making different designs, but I have enough to show the effect of saving some energy from a loss. The one I have now connected shows the most effect so far, but I know it can be better. You may have to watch this video a couple times to get an understanding of what I'm trying to convey here. The string of coils break up the charge from the voltage source, and they are recollected in the capacitors to reduce a loss that may normally be overlooked. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish. So I hope you found this video interesting, and I thank you for watching. Please subscribe, give a thumbs up, and share.